<laughs> Look at that! There is a port! This thing is upgradable! Let's break some Mac Studios. Just kidding, I really hope we don't break these. But MKBHD said that there is no way to take these apart to clean out the fans, so challenge accepted. Personally, I really want to see how Apple pulled off you know, having so much performance in such a small package and getting it cool. And with that, the base M1 Max models, they actually come in at two pounds lighter, which is a massive difference because they have a different cooling solution, possibly in design and definitely in materials. Now, first impressions, guys, this packaging is amazing. Look at this cloth little strap here, the handle, and this thing is so dang heavy. Man, it is shocking. It's pretty small, but the weight of it is just so dense with parts. We have this recycled kind of cloth uh, material. Let's open this thing up. Man, I love how Apple has this nice presentation and packaging. You're spending a lot of money, <laughs> but they make you feel better about it. All right, look at this bad boy. Look at all of those ports on the backside with this huge exhaust. And then at the bottom, we have the inlets. And Apple said that they changed the angle of the over 2,000 holes or so. So the air like spins when it comes in. It is incredible. And the crazy thing is, we actually bought three of these Mac Studios and multiple displays and other accessories. Spent over $17,000 to provide the very best Mac Studio and Studio Display coverage on the internet. So if you guys want to see how they compare to each other, which upgrades are worth it, the thermals, the wattages, frequencies, if there's any throttling, how much the RAM matters, any of those questions, and how they compare to Apple's other Macs, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you guys appreciate it and help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. With that said, let's take this thing apart. Now, Vadim and I spent a ton of time yesterday trying to figure out the best way to open this up because there are no visible screws, fasteners, anything to be able to lift it up. So we did notice online that it seems like there might be some screws underneath this rubber, but also some of these ports back here go all the way through like this power cord port. It won't allow the bottom just slip out along with these USB type C's. So I think we're gonna have to figure that out. So the first thing we're gonna do is take off this rubber ring. So for that, we're gonna pull out our iFixit kit. Not sponsored by iFixit, but iFixit, please reach out. We keep repping your guys' awesome tools. We'd love to get sponsored with you. Let's go ahead and grab a spudger here, something that's plastic so it won't damage it. It was hard to find a point to stick it in, but I got it here right at this edge and I'm gonna just slowly try to get it to go unglued and I just felt something like a little dip in there possibly for a screw at least that's what we're hoping for this is definitely glued down nicely or taped down yep it's true. all right all right all right Woo -hoo -hoo! wow okay now what is this what is that it looks like braille. Hopefully it's not like a secret magnetic key that you have to put in there, but we see the screws. So let's go ahead and find the right little bit to fit. Guys, if you guys do anything techie at all, you should buy one of these kits. We'll leave an affiliate link down below. They are super high quality. That one was too big, so it looks like a T3 bit. All right, wow, Apple got these really, really tight. Dang, oh, and now we see it's actually starting to come apart from its casing. So it looks like it's not impossible to take this apart. Now, as I am unscrewing these, I have to tell you guys about our excellent new shirts that Vadim designed. This is a nice, subtle design. I don't know if you guys see the details all around. This is the M1 Ultra Chip Package. So it looks really cool here. Go ahead and check out the link if you wanna see the full details. And we will give you 20% off for now if you use the coupon code M1ULTRA at checkout. Thank you guys for supporting our efforts. All right, we got the last screw here, guys. I'm so excited, but we might have some more challenges because of these Thunderbolt ports. It looks like they are blocking it from dropping, but let's go ahead and see. All right, Woo! okay. Well, I guess there's more to unscrew. <laughs> That was easier than I thought. Um, wow, so I thought the whole shell would just come off, possibly maybe at an angle, but it looks like this is a nice solid piece of aluminum with these little pads 
Uh, that's gonna make sure there's no vibration. So very cool, no flex like at all there. And here we have, all right, but this is what we were finding before. Yep. Online, these little blocks of aluminum, well, there's actually three of them. Oh, yep, they are antennas, these things right here. You were right, Vadim. it looks like those are the antennas and the bottom of this, and this outside edge is actually, it looks like plastic, just like on the iPhones and iPads, uh, to allow that signal to come through, so very cool. Now we also see the tiny little speaker right over there. Yeah. Um, and then that just fires what? I guess down through the little ports on the bottom, the air intakes. So it looks like the next step is to unconnect this whole top portion, which is the power supply. Uh, and then we're gonna have to release this solid aluminum frame to get the actual ports to pop out before we have full access. So this is built very well. I thought a lot of this would be plastic, but no, it's all aluminum. All right, we have those undone, but it's not coming off. So we have another screw here. Vadim, <laughs> look at that. Look at that. There is a port. This thing is upgradable. Okay, um, I don't know if I can, here, look over here, look from the angle. Okay, on, I was yeah. gonna unscrew that. Oh my goodness, is that what, what I think it is? What is that? So. Obviously the RAM's not upgradable, it's on the SOC. That looks like you can put an SSD yep. into it. And look, you could probably do that without yep. even taking it apart. Yep. You pop it in, turn it, slide it in, and it's literally right from here, just screw that down and you can upgrade your SSD. So it's not soldered on. Looks like we might have another one on this side right here. Look at that, I'm guessing it's the Ooh, same thing. Yep, yep. It's so if you didn't spring for a bunch of uh, SSD storage, you didn't spend the money, later you should be able to plug that in just like you can with their Mac Pro. That is awesome. All right, let's get this power supply unconnected. That's probably how it gets power to the motherboard. And bam, it looks like it does lift up now. We have a couple cables here. All right, here is one of them. And then this one here is the one that actually connects to where your cable plugs into the wall. Nice and easy to remove it, but be careful. Do not touch any of this exposed stuff. You can get shocked. Man, this is a lot more complex than I expected. The layering, we have antenna bands and cables going all around the outside, different shields, and it looks like even the fan assembly is mounted to the outer case. This bottom piece looks like it's just like a shield to protect the motherboard from the power supply, and it's just suspended in the air. So I think the next thing I gotta do is to unscrew this aluminum frame to be able to access the ports and unconnect those. All right, wow, this whole thing just lifts up. So that's literally for the bottom cover and the power supply, all aluminum, no flex. Man, this is some high quality stuff. Look at that, dude, Vadim, is that the M1 Ultra chip right there? On the bottom of it, look, you got the heat pipes wrapping around from there. You have this thing that holds it and the screws here wow. literally just to lift it up. So what is this on the outside then? Some controllers or could that be I don't know. like RAM? I thought the RAM's inside here. You know what? Let's just take the stickers off. This is Angelica's Mac Studio that she's gonna be editing our videos on. So why not? Let's pull this off. All right, so that looks like it's some kind of power controller, right? Looks like the same thing under this one. And it looks like something else under here. I have no idea. There's more of these chips over here. So it looks like that doesn't matter. Everything is underneath this uh, heat pipe and cooler, which is actually nice because with Apple's new uh, Apple Silicon chips, your RAM is cooled down as well, not only the CPU and GPU chips. You know what? This connector actually looks like the same ones on my Mac Pro. So let me go grab that SSD and we will see if it fits. All right, guys. So yeah, it's not gonna fit. <laughs> look at this thing. This thing is big and a lot slower than the built-in one to the Mac Studio, but let me see if the pins line up. All right, looks like, let me see, they look like they maybe line up? Nope, they're off a little bit. This section right here is shorter. Apple said that the Mac Studio is not user accessible, just like they talk about with the MacBook Pro. Most people thought it means it's just soldered in, but that also gives us a clue that it could be upgraded, it's just not by the user. You're gonna have to take it into Apple, just like you have to do with the iMac Pro to get things like your RAM upgraded. So that gives us lots of hope. And of course, OWC could come out and make upgrade kits for it, just like they do for a ton of Mac stuff. So that is gonna be awesome. But next, we're gonna start unscrewing some of these ports on the sides. Man, there are so many ribbon cables here. I really hope I don't mess something up.
Looks like I have to take the SSD off to access the USB-C ports on the front. And this thing is literally taped on. <laughs> they don't want you to remove it, but we have to. Sorry, Angelica, your Mac Studio is getting a surgery done right now. All right. Wow, that was easy right there. What if I just want to put it into the other slot so it's not in the way of those ports? You know, I just plug the sucker in. Bam, tighten it down. It'd be cool to see if it actually would start up and not have any issues. It shouldn't. Uh, you know, they designed these to be able to add SSDs. Very cool. The USB-C port holder is done. And now let's remove this antenna because we're going to need to access the screw below it. All right, nice and easy. That's a massive antenna. Let's lay this down. Yeah, you're not gonna have a Bluetooth problem. No Bluetooth more. problems here. Apple made sure of that. Let's finish off with these antennas and then I'm going to try to attempt to just remove these four outside screws that hold down the fan assembly and see if we can just lift it up without having to remove all of these ports. I'm really not looking forward to putting this sucker back oh together before we can start benchmarking, man. So long, Ethernet port. We got this bad boy out. All right, let's try this again. Can we clear it? Nope, <laughs> we can't clear it. So now I'm getting rid of everything. Every single thing, including the speaker now, has to come off just to access more screws. This is insane. It looks like we got a little battery underneath there just to make sure all your stuff is saved if you power it off. Apple actually made a little enclosure to make it sound better instead of just having it be free air, which is appreciated. Apple cares. All right, and we got our legacy ports out of there. And now for the culprit, the one thing that held everything together that you have to remove everything for, the power jack. Now for the front USB-C, man, these are some rigid cables. I've got to say, no Windows manufacturer would ever do this. All these little screws and cables. Why not just have the ports not be as flush and just have one piece that slides in? Well, Apple cares, I guess, making a really solid system. And we also now know that if at any time your little USB-C connector goes out or HDMI or anything, you can fix it yourself. It's not that difficult. All right, guys, my worst nightmare has come true. <laughs> the last ports that I was trying to keep in here without all these screws, they're all individuals, have to come out. You literally have to disassemble everything to get this out. All right, guys, the second moment of truth. Man, if you guys appreciate all of this and the effort having to put this back together afterwards, please buy a shirt. <laughs> All right, guys, looks like it has to go front forward first, which makes sense. Oh, man, Whoa. this is where all the weight is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. So it looks like the logo is not used for antennas like they've done in the past. All of those are at the bottom of the system. So probably don't put it on a metal desk or anything like that. And here we have the computer. Whoa. We got those dual fans. We have this section right here that wow. actually curves and seals towards the back of the case. In Apple's renderings, they showed it having a gap, which I thought was weird, um, but it actually is longer, super tight fitting in there. The fins here are super, super close together. There's not a lot of room there, and it's crazy how front heavy this is. The backside barely weighs anything where we have these dual fans. The front is most of the weight. Copper. It's all copper. Yeah, it's coated though. And it's also crazy how small this motherboard is, super thin. This is the whole computer here. And the chip is massive compared to other chips, so the CPU and graphics. We also just have only two heat pipes coming up here to the cooler, as you guys could see. Um, and they just connect right here. They don't spread out. It's right here in the center, which is also interesting. But I guess we'll see how the thermals go when we actually plug it in and test it out. All right, guys, we have to keep going. Let's get this cooler off uh, because I wanna see if we have dual cooling from this side with the heat pipes and from the other side. We know Apple is working on a chip that has four chips connected, probably the M2 Ultra or M2 Ultra Duo or M2 Extreme, we don't know. But let's see if we have dual cooling. So we're gonna start out by unscrewing the, where our little heat pipes get connected. Bam, right there. We know we have thermal paste there. Interesting it's not soldered on. All right, let's flip it over now and get these fans unscrewed. And let's pop this thing off. Wow, okay, that was easy. Look at that in here. 
That is a lot of space for air. And look at that. Look at all these screws holding one antenna cable all the way just so I can plug in on the other side for this. I'm so glad I didn't try to get that removed. I'm gonna leave that there. We have all these fins. I saw those screws, I thought it might be holding it to the motherboard, but no. So it's only these top screws here, probably these four. So it looks like it's still not coming off. And this thing that holds down the M1 Ultra chip, uh, it also goes all the way through the motherboard and it's connected to the cooler on the other side, which makes sense. But dang, I would not recommend doing this. And there is yeah. no way that I'm going to take apart another one. I am just dreading putting this back together. All right, <laughs> we got these off. I can't believe it took so much of this apart. Thank you. Whoa! Oh! Oh! What's crazy is that it looks like this top plate, it is literally screwed into the chip or into the motherboard because that is held together. Oh, wow. All right. Oh! Show it. Show it. <laughs> there you go. No the way. M, oh. No, okay. this is crazy. Wow. The M1 Ultra is literally cooled to this whole thing. Is this, what is this, heat no pipes? Way. It literally goes to this whole block and this backside is literally cooling just the back part of it to get it even cooler. Damn. I thought it was weird having those two heat pipes and that is the only way that it's transferring stuff. Both sides. Literally dual-sided cooling and look at that beauty right there. It is actually hidden, well protected. See the Apple logo in there? Yes, I do see it. I do see the Apple logo. Wow. And we have this whole thing. Look at this little thermal material, this whole casing with that plate that goes straight to the coolers. That is incredible. That's insane. That's copper. What's copper? Oh, that, that bottom plate, right? Yeah, I guess that is all copper. Yeah, it is for sure copper. Wow. This is all copper. Man, look at that beauty. Look at that, guys. Or just like the shirt that you should buy with promo code M1 Ultra for 20% off, <laughs> you have this beautiful thing with the Apple logo. Man, that is incredible. And we have mission successful. And look, this M1 Ultra is literally, I don't know, half of the whole motherboard size. It is huge and it is thick and it is incredible. It's actually really interesting how it just has contact where the M1 Ultra chip is, nowhere around. So it really doesn't have to cool down the memory. It actually just passively goes through. But that little shape right there shows exactly the size of the M1 Ultra. So even though with Apple's animations with the M1, the M1 Pro Max and Ultra looks huge, that literally is the size. It is still nice and small. And it's nice how there's a little extra space there for the thermal compound once it squeezes out. So there's no issues. With that said, let's go ahead and clean it off and see that Apple logo. So there you guys go. We have that Apple logo on there. Now you know just how big the M1 Ultra is, both the package and just the chipset. We have this beautiful look and just how crazy Apple went. Absolutely, I don't know, insane building the system. I do not envy the people that are putting these together day to day. And just to show you guys the difference, here is a Ryzen processor, the whole package compared to Apple's M1 Ultra package. <laughs> that is crazy. But at the same time, you see a size difference. Apple's has the RAM in there, the controllers in there, everything is in there. Uh, up to 128 gigs of RAM compared to just a CPU. So they have an incredible, incredible design. Guys, thank you for watching. If you guys appreciate it, please subscribe. We have so many comparisons coming as far as the actual workflows for real world stuff like photo editing, video editing, coding, uh, uh, just so much stuff, logic. You guys can check that out, different comparisons, and also which upgrades are worth it. Do you need the extra RAM? Do you need the 64 core Ultra or should you just get the 48 core like this one is right here? Or is the M1 Max good enough? What are the thermal differences? All that stuff we are gonna check out as well as the display compared to LGs, compared to the Pro Display, a lot of detailed videos. Please wish me luck putting this back together. I'm gonna need it and check out one of these shirts with the code M1 Ultra. We have a couple great videos right over there for you guys to watch while you wait, click above to subscribe, this is Max, and I'll see you in the next video.